Welcome to Social Elo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. I'm going to spend some time looking at decisions, those that are carnal and those that are spiritual, because many people are in situations that basically they made a carnal decision, trying to make it look spiritual, or made a carnal decision and expected the Lord to come in and bless the situation, but quite frankly, they're in a situation where the devil is actually laughing at them because basically he got you but it may not be permanent go and take a look at two situations and one of the things is you may be going through an issue and you can do a keyword search for the for an answer in the bible however it may not be what the holy spirit of the lord is communicating to you regarding your specific situation and that's why it's important to seek the Lord. He will give you answers. Now the answers may not always be what you want to hear, but he'll always tell you what you need to hear. Just ensure that you're hearing from him. And a part of making carnal or fleshly decisions and making it look spiritual, for example in Genesis 29, Jacob and Laban had an agreement. Jacob would work seven long and hard years so he could marry Laban's daughter Rachel a woman he loved but Laban made a switch at last minute and Jacob ended up marrying Leah and he didn't know until after he consummated the marriage woke up the following morning <laughs> and to his horror there was Leah a woman he hated when he went to Laban and protested Laban said that he would allow allow them to finish their marital week and then he'd give him Rachel, but he'd have to work seven more years in order to keep her. And Jacob, because he loved Rachel, he worked seven years in order to keep the woman he loved. But there was a, that issue with, with, um, with, with Leah. What was he going to do with her? What would the Lord say? But it doesn't say anything about Jacob even contemplating divorcing Leah but one thing the Bible does say is that Lab or Jacob hated Leah and she had to live with that so because of a carnal decision she ended up in a marriage with a man who hated her and that's one of the ways where the devil will tell you that he got you because you did something that sounded good at the time but it backfires on you and it usually backfires big time and even in bearing a total of seven children for Jacob, thinking those children would draw Jacob closer to her, Leah suffered even more. And to add to it, he got to see, or she got to see, Jacob being much happier with her sister, Rachel. But again, from the very beginning, Jacob loved Rachel, not Leah. And their marriage, Jacob and Leah's marriage, and I use the word marriage loosely, but their marriage was as a result of witchcraft. It was a carnal decision and it had serious consequences. We're gonna look at Abraham and Sarah because there was a juxtaposition of a carnal and a spiritual decision. And one of the things to note with this is that you can't always think that if you do something carnal, that the Lord is going to bless it like he did with Jacob and, and Leah. Because a part of the Lord blessing Leah with children was the Lord wanted to raise a nation up out of Jacob, who was later renamed Israel. So those six sons that I mentioned Leah having, that was a part of her blessing from the Lord. He blessed her with the children, but he didn't bless the marriage in terms of turning Jacob, Jacob's heart towards her. Nope, the Lord did not infringe upon Jacob's free will. So he used Leah to give birth to basically half a nation. With Abraham, things were a bit different because starting in Genesis 15, verse four, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine hair, 
referring to Eliezer, who was Abraham's servant. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. So the Lord promised Abraham a son, the fruit of his loins, which was very comforting. But a lot of time went by, and in Genesis 16, we see how Sarah came up with a carnal decision to basically help the Lord fulfill his promise by having Abraham sleep with her servant Hagar. So Hagar became Abraham's concubine, and they produced Ishmael. And it seemed as if it was a fulfillment of the Lord's promise. After all, the Lord said that he was going to bless Abraham with a child from his own loins. So it seemed as if the promise had been fulfilled. But bear with me. In Genesis 17, starting verse 9, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant before, or of course, thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So circumcision, the removal of excess skin. It's not to say that the skin is useless, but it is excess. And the Lord was commanding him to cut the excess skin off. For a lot of you, you're in a situation where the Lord wants to fulfill a promise to you, but it requires that you get rid of some carnal things. And many of you, you're holding on to those carnal things while waiting for a spiritual blessing from the Lord. And it's not going to happen. Until you get rid of those carnal things, your spiritual blessing from the Lord is not going to come. So for example, if you're waiting on a godly spouse, where you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and especially if you're living in sin, the Lord is not going to bring someone into your life. So if you have something carnal, regardless of whatever it is, and especially if the Lord has commanded you to get rid of it, then get rid of it. And we'll see just how bad it can be in terms of getting rid of something. And in verse 15 of Genesis 17, Lord, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So there was a problem already. Abraham had received a promise from the Lord that he was going to bless him with a child. He slept with Hagar, conceived Ishmael, but now the Lord is telling him that he was going to bless Sarah with a child. But then it continues. I'll skip down to verse 18, or starting verse 18. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. So that was something carnal that Abraham was starting to hold on to. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and, and with his seed after him. The Lord continued by saying he was going to bless Ishmael also. But a key thing to note, the Lord said his covenant was going to be with Isaac. So it didn't matter what kind of carnal thing 
Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar were involved with before, the spiritual promise from the Lord was going to take effect. And he may have caught on to something where it's like, hey, the Lord's going to bless them, but they have still hold on to the carnal thing. Hold your horses. Skip in Genesis 21, starting in verse 8. When the Lord fulfilled his promise, and Abraham and Sarah conceived Isaac. So Genesis 21, starting in verse 8. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Hagar was an Egyptian. The descendants of Abraham would end up in Egypt. Initially, it was under good circumstances with Joseph, but they end up becoming slaves and they suffered in Egypt. So Egypt is also symbolic of a place of bondage. Carnal decisions will put you in bondage. Carnal decisions will also keep you in bondage. And we see an example of that in Exodus when the Israelites were trying to leave, but the Egyptians kept on holding on to them. And even after they left, the Egyptians follow them. But another thing to note is that Ishmael was mocking. That's one of those things where when you make those carnal decisions, even if you try to make it seem spiritual, those carnal decisions will blow up in your face, so to speak, and come back to haunt you. In some cases, it'll be the devil laughing at you because he caused you to make a carnal decision and you kind of get stuck. But it continues. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac. So now you have a problem between the carnal and the spiritual. The carnal being Ishmael and the spiritual being Isaac because it was... Well, not only was Isaac spiritual in terms of in terms of being a promise from the Lord. But Sarah, she had passed the age of conception. So this was truly a gift from God. Abraham would later remarry after Sarah died, a woman named Keturah. And Abraham had more children. So the problem was never with Abraham, it was with Sarah. So Isaac was truly a gift from God. But now the gift from God and the, the spiritual gift and the carnal thing causing conflicts. And much like circumcision earlier, now Sarah was saying, get rid of Ishmael. Do you have any Ishmaels in your life? Whether a man or woman or even a thing. Something that is interfering with your relationship with the Lord. Has the Lord also told you to get rid of that thing? And it continues. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Abraham loved his son. So even though Ishmael was as a result of a carnal decision, Abraham loved the decision or the result of the carnal decision. Some of you, one of the reasons why you have refused to let go of a carnal decision, even if the Lord has told you, sometimes repeatedly, to get rid of it, is because you love it. I continue. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight, because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And the Lord continued by saying that, yes, he would bless Ishmael. But again, that also points to another thing. And it kind of ties in what I said about Leah earlier. 
just because the Lord may bless your situation in a way doesn't mean that he's in favor of it. It's not always his seal of approval. Sometimes it's a matter of his love. And even though a situation may be blessed in a way, it's only a partial way in comparison to when you are in full obedience to the Lord and he blesses it fully. And Abraham complied and he put Hagar and Ishmael out. And even though that sounds kind of cold, what Abraham actually did was turn them over to the Lord. And the Lord took care of them. But one of the things about Ishmael and Isaac, they're both descendants of Abraham. But even the descendants of Ishmael and the descendants of Isaac, they're at odds today because of that carnal decisions. So the carnal decisions you've made in your life, how are they impacting your life right now? And how will it impact generations to come after you? Depending on how much longer we all have here left on earth. Please, do not make carnal decisions and try to make them seem spiritual. And when the Lord gives you instructions, follow those instructions. If the Lord tells you to cut something off, cut it off, regardless of how much you love it. And actually, in some cases, you do not love that carnal thing, so it's easy to just throw it away. I mentioned about the Egyptians coming back after the Israelites. There are times when you will get rid of a carnal thing, the Lord has pulled you out of bondage, but then the devil will try to come back and pull you back in. You have to keep the doors closed on the devil. Because one thing about God, he doesn't lie and he does not change his mind. So if he tells you to do something, he's not going to come back and contradict what he said. So if he tells you to throw something away, throw it away. If he tells you to get rid of something, get rid of it. Many of you, quite frankly, are going to lose out on God's best because you're going to hold on to something that's carnal, try to make it seem spiritual, and you're going to seek God's blessings. And there's some things that the Lord absolutely will not bless. The choice is yours. What is the Lord trying to circumcise from your life? What is he trying to get rid of that you're holding on to? I said a lot. I'm going to leave the rest up to you and the Holy Spirit of the Lord.